First of all, I asked my sister and I left Pusbanjali, my heart like flowers thousands of times, with the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual guru gave. Asmadiya Parma Radhatam Guru Pada Padma Nitilila Pravish Om Vishnu Pad Ashtol Tarasata Sri Rupanu Rajari Varya Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I have my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev Sila Bhakti Pakyan Kishu Goswami Maharaj to Sila AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada to Nitilila Purishtam Vishnu Bhara Shtodar Satsi Samad Bhakti Vaiva Puri Goswami Maharaj Param Puja Pad Sila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj Param Puja Pad Sila Bhakti Rakshak Shirada Goswami Maharaj and to all the Sat Parshat Brinda Eternal Associates of Nopad Sila Bhakti Siddhanta Sajwari Thakur and to our entire Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Brahma and finally after my Pranam Param Pujpad Sri Bhattalok Paramadwaiti Maharaj Sri Pad Bhaktinati Yati Maharaj and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis Vancha Kalpata Vidasar Pansi Nivedita Putitara Parami Nivedita By the closest mercy of Sri Guru and Gauranga Today we are observing the divine Adil Bhav Titi the appearance day of Saptam Goswami Satchidananda Sila Bhaktino Thakur Ki Sila Bhaktino Thakur received a title from the Goswami's community in Padnapara that title is Saptam Goswami. Six Goswamis are famous Jai Rupa Sanatana Bhattar Guna, Siddhiva Gopala Bhattadasra Guna in Vrindavan. And after them, many Acharyas came to this world like Srila Navratan Das Thakur, Srila Vishnu Chakri Thakur, Srila Baladeva Devotion, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So, each of these personalities could be called the seventh Goswami. So, why is it that this title was not given to them, but it was uh, reserved by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And he inspired the Goswamis of Bhagnapara to give this title to Srila Bhakti Nautakura. So the reason is this, that when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami and others to Vrindavan, he sent them there with four missions, four parts of his mission. First of all, look to Tirtha Uddhara, to uncover the lost holy places in Vrajamanda. Then, see Vigraha Prakash, to discover the lost deities of Govinda, Gopinath, Madan Mohan, others. Then, 
Bhakti Granta Pranayana to compose scriptures describing the path of bhakti. And finally, Vaishnav Satatya Sthapana to establish what is the correct behavior for Vaishnavas, as has been explained by Srila Gopal Bhattaka Swami in his Satkrisa Dipika, Sanskar Dipika, and Srila Sanatana Swami in his uh, commentary on Gopal Bhattaka Swami's Hari Bhakti Vilas and so on. So these were the four missions, or four parts of his mission the Sri Chaitanya who gave to the six Goswamis to perform in Vrindavan. And they did it in the most excellent way. But it was only Srila Bhaktinal Thakur, one person who fulfilled all the four aspects of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission in relation to Navadip Dham. After the disappearance of Mahaprabhu and Rupa and Sanatan, and then the next generation, Jiva Goswami and Srila Narutam Srinivas and Shamananda Pandit. They came in the Gaudi history, a dark period, where the Aposampradayas, deviations from the true teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they flourished everywhere. Aul, Baal, Karta, Barja, Nera, Daraga, Shasai. Sahaja, Saki, Bekki, Smarta, Jat, Gosai, Atit, Bari, Chuda, Dari, Goranga, Nagari, Totukari, Heitara, Sangi, Nahikari. Thirteen different deviations from the path of pure bhakti as taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there was a dark period and the aristocracy, the educated and gentle persons, cultured persons in society, they began to despise Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Not actual Gaudiya Vaishnavas, but what became known as Gaudiya Vaishnavas thinking that they were um, uneducated, unprincipled, and quite degenerate. So, on this day, in the year 1838, Srila Bhaktinam Thakur appeared in this world, in the village of Ula. And from his childhood, he was very, very studious and always absorbed in thinking about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is actually the eternal associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna. But when he came into this world, he played like, a, in some respects, an ordinary human being going through the stages of life inquiring, what is God? What is true religion? What is the truth? And studying various religions and making deep study of our uh, Vedic Shastras and Gaudiya Goswami Grantas as well to teach us that we have to make a very serious study of Vedic scriptures and the writings of our Goswamis. So he showed by his own example. So he was always in the liberated position. But by the arrangement of Yoga Maya, he was uh, acting like a regular person and going through the stages of development in his life to teach us. So, when Srila Bhaktinam Thakur, he was in Bengal and he began to set off to, to go to Vrindavan and he had a desire, I want to do bhajan in Vrindavan. But on the way there, he visited the temple of the Tarakeshwar, the most famous Shivlin in, in Bengal. And when he stayed there overnight, Lord Shiva came to him in a dream and told him, don't stay in Braja. You have many important missions to fulfill in Navadvipta. Because at that time, <laughs> Mahadev Ki Jai! So on the inspiration of Mahadev, Srila Bhaktinam Thakur, he went to Braja, but he came back. And one day, he was at the Ranabari Dharmashala in Kulia, in Navadip town, and he was on the roof. It was about 10 o'clock at night. And he was looking across to the Mayapur side. And he saw a very huge, effulgent uh, uh, temple. So he was wondering. Others who were with him could not see it. But his, one of his sons, Kamala Prasad, was there. He could also see it. So he understood this is a mystical vision. 
What is the significance of that place? So, Srila Bhaktinath Thakur set off and began to inquire from the villagers there. And they said, oh, this area is called uh, Balal Dighi. So, Balal Dighi is the, the local name, that is the corruption of the term uh, Balal Dirghika, which was a huge lake that was uh, excavated, actually, millions of years before, first of all by Prithu Maharaj. And then later it was expanded by the Emperor of Bengal, the father of the great devotee Lakshman Sain. Uh, his name was Balal Sain. And Lakshman Sain, as a memorial to his father, Balal Sain, expanded that place, Prithu Kund, and he became known as Balal Digi. So 500 years before, Srila, 400 years before, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad had written a poem called Navadi Pastakam. And in that Navadi Pastakam, he said that the house of Jagannath Mishra lies between the bank of the Ganga Bhagirati and the Balal Dirgika. And therefore, Srila Bhakti Notakur could understand, oh, this is the, must be the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He, he asked local Muslims who were living in an area between the Balal Dirgika and the Ganga. And they said, Oh, this place is called Niyapur. And this is a useless place. We try to farm here, but nothing grows here except for Tulsi. <laughs> Again, Srila Bhakti Nautakur thought, oh, it's a sign. And then he wrote to the British Museum in England. And he sent for documents. And he checked the ancient uh, maps that had been made by the British many years before. And also corroborating with the Chaitanya Bhagavat and other scriptures. You see, in Chaitanya Bhagavat, it is said, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did his march for freedom, <laughs> <laughs> then from the house of Jagannath Mishra, with thousands of devotees, Mahaprabhu went along the Gan Ganges and he went past the Mahaprabhu Ghat and the Jagai Madai Ghat. Barakona Ghat and other Ghats and then he came to the house of the Chankazi in Simantadvi. So the Chankazi Samadhi was famous and it was there on that side. So it's very clear that the house of Jagannath Mishra must be there on the same side as the Samadhi of the Chankazi and all those Ghats also were there. There's no description in Chaitanya Bhagavat that when Mahapu left his home that all the thousands of people crossed the Ganga. And so, using evidence from scripture, evidence from maps, the names of the local places, Srila Bhakti Nautaku concluded, oh, this area here, this must be the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But, who would listen to him? So, some years before, uh, let me see, now the year is 1892. So, in 1880, 12 years before, Srila Bhaktino Thakur met for the first time with Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. And then again, 11 years later, in 1892, Srila Bhaktino Thakur attended an all-night kirtan on uh, the Kadasi day with Srila Bhaktino, with Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and saw his incredible ecstatic symptoms. He himself was so absorbed in praying that when he was doing kirtan, Everyone who was present there in that kirtan, they also began to cry and became overwhelmed with love of God. And Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was saying, Nadia, Nadia Godru Nityananda Mahajan Pati Ache Nama Ate Jira Kala Srila Jagannath Daspati was crying torrents of tears and saying, Oh, what kind of name has Nityanandapu brought to this world? And he's selling this holy name in the Namahatta, the marketplace of the holy name, only for the price of your faith. So you can see that Srila Bhakti Thakur was inspired by his Shiksha Guru, Srila Jagannath Daspavaji, to begin the expansion from Godrundweep of the Namahata 
of the, the marketplace of the Holy Name in every town and village throughout the world. So, Srila Bhaktino Thakur invited Srila Jagannath Das Pabhati Maharaj to come and he invited many, many Vaishnavas from all over Bengal and they met in Mayapur and when Srila Jagannath Das Pabhati Maharaj came there he was carried, he used to be carried in a basket on the head of his servant who was a very strong bridge basi named Bihari Das Pabhati and when Bihari Das Pabhati brought Srila Jagannath Das Pabhati Maharaj there and he came to that place, though he was more than 100 years old. And his, actually he was not blind, he could see, but his eyelids became so droopy, they fell over his eyes. So to look, he had to pick them up. <laughs> so Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, when he came there, he jumped out of the basket. And he was dancing. Jai Satchinandan, Jai Satchinandan, Jai Satchinandan, Jai Satchinandan, Jai Satchinandan, Jai spiritual vision he could see that this was the yoga pit of Mayapur Navadvi. It was Jagannath Mishra Bhavan he saw with his spiritual vision and said this is the place. And also he walked some distance and he said oh and this is the Sri Vasanga the courtyard of Sri Thakur and this is called Dangabhanga. This is the place where the Chankas his men smashed the Madangas in the Kirtan. He pointed out, this is where Advaita Charya's house is. And next door, the house of Gadara Pandit also, Gadara Bhavan. So in this way, it was certified by Vaishnava Sarvabhoma. Sarvabhoma means the whole world. In other words, that Vaishnava who was considered to be the foremost authority in the world at that time, in all three dharms, Braj Mandal, Gauda Mandal and Ketra Mandal Jagannath Puri. He endorsed and confirmed that yes, Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur has discovered the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was Srila Jagannath Das Bhaji Maharaj who told Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur in the yoga pit in Mayapur, you should establish beneath the neem tree there the deities of Sachimata and Jagannath Mishra and baby Nimai. And in a separate mandir, you should establish Gora Narayan. And on each side, his Bhu and Sri Shakti, that means Bhu Shakti, Vishnu Priya Devi, and Sri Shakti, Lakshmi Priya Devi. And in another Prakosht, you should establish the Pancha Tattva. And in another Prakosht, you should establish Sisi Radha Madhav. Hmm? So, later, she, uh, under the guidance of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and with the very strong uh, preaching of Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Thakur, that whole Yoga Pit temple and all the deities were established there. So the question comes, why did Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj tell Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur to establish these various altars in the Yoga Pit? First of all, Jagannath, Mishra and, and Sachimata, they were established to give the realization, the impression to the whole world. This is where our Nimai was born. And then three altars. It's very confidential. In Bhakti Ratnakar you can hear the narrative of how Srinivas Acharya, Ramachandra Kaviraj and Nartanda Thakur they came to Navadvip and when they arrived there, they met with Ishan Thakur, who was the personal servant in the house of Jagannath Mishra. Though Mahaprabhu, Jagannath Mishra, Sachimata, they all left this world, but Ishan Thakur was very old and he was still staying there and always crying in separation. So Srinivas Acharya asked him, can you take us on the Parikram of Navadvip Dham? Ishan Thakur said, oh, Navadip Dham is unlimited. 
Navati Dham is Gambir, so inscrutable, so confidential. Who can describe the glories of Navati Dham? I am not qualified. And then they were very sad. After some time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inspired Ishtan Thakur. He said, but I have seen something. Because he was there in all the pastimes actually. I have seen something. So be ready tomorrow morning. I'll take you on the program. Hmm? So then they slept that night. Srinivas Acharya, he lay down in the dust. And he was looking around the house of Jagannath Mishra. He thought, this is made of bamboo and uh, leaves. How is it that the Supreme Lord, Para Brahma, the highest absolute truth, would live in such a simple dwellings? And thinking in this way, he fell asleep. In his dream, he saw the house of Jagannath Mishra. It was like a palace that would put to shame the palace of Indra in Swargalok. With golden walls covered in uh, jewels and uh, pillars of jewels. It was most astonishing and beautiful. And in his dream, he got up. And he went into one uh, courtyard and there he saw Sri Gauranga Maharpabhu with Lakshmi Priya and Vishnu Priya and millions of their maid servants. And then he woke up. Oh, what is this? Then he fell asleep again. And then the next time in his dream, he was again in the house of Jagannath Mishra. He went into another part of the house. And there he saw Sachinanda and Gohari with a whole bunch of tattva doing kirtan. Surrounded by even the six Goswamis who were there, Ramananda Rai, Saurabh Dhamada, Prataparudra Maharaj, they all were there. And then suddenly he woke up again. Then he fell asleep again. Then he woke up and he saw Radha and Krishna. And he saw that he himself was Mani Manjari serving Radha and Krishna in the Nikon. So in this way, the Mayapur Yoga Pit is an unlimited place. And by the mercy of Prauda Maya, the Yoga Maya of Navadvip, Srinivas Acharya realized that that unlimited place has many prakash, or many chambers, many prakosh. So first he saw what is called the Antarpur Vilas, where Gora Narayan, in his opulent feature, is performing pastimes with Vishnu Priya and Lakshmi Priya. After that, he saw the Sankirtan Vilas, where the Panchatattva are eternally dancing. And after that, he saw the Nikunja Vilas, which is not different from the Vrindavan Yoga Beat, where there is the meeting of Radha and Krishna. So in this way, his question, oh, why is this such a simple place? It was answered by those divine visions. In his Swapna Samadhi, we cannot say it's a dream, it's called... Swapna Samadhi, a dream trance. So, in this way, Srila Bhaktinath, that place was lost for hundreds of years. And Srila Bhaktinath Thakur, he discovered it again. It was endorsed by Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. And then each of those confidential prakash of the transcendental Navadvip were manifested under the guidance of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and Srila Bhaktinath Thakur there for the whole world to have darshan of the various vilas of that yoga pit. So, when we pray to Srila Bhakti no Thakur, we say, Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satyadananda Namine Gaur Shakti Surupaya Rupanuga Varayate we bow down to Srila Bhakti Nautaku. His whole life is Bhakti Vinod. That is, Vinod means the joy, the amusement, the curiosity, the overflowing enthusiasm of Bhakti. So his name is Namo Bhakti Vinodaya. Satchidananda Namine. He was always Satchidananda. He was not a conditioned soul who became liberated. He came here from the beginning, he was always Satchidananda. And Gaura Shakti Swarupaya. The Gaura Shakti means the power of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Kali Kalera Dharma Krishna Nama Sankirtan. Krishna Shakti Bina Nahi Tara Pravartan. In this age of Kali, the Yuga Dharma is Harinam Sankirtan. And without the Shakti of Krishna, it cannot spread everywhere. So Srila Bhaktinathakur is the embodiment of 
Krishna Shakti or Gora Shakti. And also Gora Shakti is a name for Sri Gadada Pandit. So Srila Bhakti no Thakur was an expansion of the power of Sri Gadada Pandit. And Srila Bhakti no Thakur himself established in Godrundweep there, the beautiful temple of his Ishtadev's Sri Sri Gora Gadada. The worship of Sri Sri Gora Gadada is very confidential. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is worshipped in Vaidhi Bhakti, then his Yugul Swarup is Gore and Vishnu Priya. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is worshipped in Raganuga Bhakti or Vaidhi Bhakti, he can be worshipped as Gore Nitai. Those in Vaidhi Bhakti can worship Gore Nitai, and those in Raganuga Bhakti can also worship Gore Nitai, but they are especially favourable to those who are in the mood of Sakyarasa. And those who are in Raghunam Mark, and they are worshipping the Gora Yuga in Madhur Rasa, then they worship Gora Gadada. So Srila Bhakti Nautakur established the deities of Gora Gadada in Godrum Dweep, in his ashram there, his Bhajan Kutiya Swananda Sukhada Kunj. So the first mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was looked at Chitra Udara to discover the lost holy places. And Srila Bhakti Nautaka wandered all over and rediscovered nine islands of Navadvip and all the various pastime places of Mahaprabhu and all his different incarnations and their devotees. Then Vigraha Prakash, Srila um, Bhakti Nautaka discovered the lost deity that was worshipped by Jagannath Mishra himself, Adokshaj Vishnu. And he established Gorgadarga in Godrundvi and other deities around Navadvip. Then it appeared when they made the excavation there? That's right, yes. When Srila Bhakti Nautaka was excavating in the area of the um, yoga pit, he discovered Sri Jagannath Mishra's deity there. Adoksa Vishnu. Yes, yes. And uh, it's known that he worshipped Adoksa Vishnu, and when you see that deity, the position of the club, the conch, the lotus flower, and the chakra in the hands indicate that this is a Dokshad Vishnu. It's not another form of Vishnu. So don't think he just found some random Vishnu deity. It's actually, for, for sure, the Adoxid Vishnu of Jagannath Mishra. Then, Bhakti Granta Pranayana. Srila Bhakti Nautakur wrote so many scriptures. One may say, but the six Goswamis have already written many scriptures. Yes. But they wrote in Sanskrit. And so for many persons, the Sanskrit language is quite inaccessible. And the meaning, even if you can read Sanskrit, is very difficult to understand. So Srila Bhakti Nav Thakur summarized Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Ujwan Nilamani uh, in his uh, songs. He summarized the... He wrote a song for each verse of Shikshastakam of Mahaprabhu. He wrote a song for each verse of Uparyashamrita of Rupa Goswami. He wrote songs for each of the verses of Manashiksha of Raghunath Das Goswami. So in this way, he made all the Goswami's literatures available to the common people in vernacular, in very simple language, and in a musical form also. So in this way, he did the mission, Bhakti Granta Pranayana. Then, the Vaishnava Sadhachar Stapana, what is the proper behavior for Vaishnavas? So especially in his Chaitanya Shikshamrita, Srila Bhakti Nod Thakur has described the proper behavior in the modern age for Brahmacharis, Grihastas, Sannyasis, Vanaprastas, and also how to interact, because in this modern age we're interacting with Christians, we're interacting with people from the Islamic faith. This was something that was not addressed, but in the Goswami Granthas, how to interact with the whole world, people of different persuasions and faiths. So Srila Bhakti Nautaka also did Bhakti Granta Pranayana. So, Gaura Shakti Surupaya Rupanuga Varayate. Now we want to come to the most important part of his Pranamantra. Srila Bhakti Nautaka is called Rupanuga Variety. That means he is Rupanuga Vara, the best among the Rupanuga Vaishnavas. 
So what is the meaning of Rupanuga? Hmm? Everyone who is Rupanuga can be called Radhanuga. But not everyone who is called Radhanuga can be called Rupanuga. Why? Because Rupanuga is a very uh, specific aspect of Radhanuga Bhakti. Uh, wherein the devotee is outwardly following Rupa Goswami and inwardly following Sri Rupa Manji. So Srila Bhakti Thakur is a very near and dear associate of Rupa Manji in the group of Lalita Saki. Therefore he is written in one song Mbaranehi Tadehit Basataravali Kamala Mandari Nama Sari Barabarsha Vayaso Satata Swananda Sukada Dama He said, My complexion is like a flash of lightning. My cloth is like a clear night sky sparkling with stars. I am eternally twelve and a half years old and my name is Kamala Manji. I am doing Karpur Seva, so bringing uh, the Karpur comfort to the service of Radha and Krishna under the guidance of Lalita Saki and serving the divine couple in Swananda Sukhara Kunj, in a very beautiful Kunj, in an island across a bridge of crystals in the middle of Radha Kunj. So Sila Bhaktinam Thakur revealed his eternal identity and eternal service. Navadvi Tavatara Bhagavad also says something like this. Yes, and quoting the song from Navadvi Bhagavad yes. That song is from there. So, Srila Bhaktinam Thakur is Rupanuga variety. Rupanuga variety, the best among the Rupanuga Vaishnavas. Now, my holy master, Srila Bhaktinam Tanarayan Goswami, he used to say that even today we can associate with Srila Bhaktinam Thakur. How is that? By singing his kirtans. But, we should not sing his kirtans with the ego. I am singing this kirtan. But rather you should think, when you sing the songs of Srila Bhakti no Thakur, that you are sitting down next to Srila Bhakti no Thakur, and he is singing his Nitya kirtan, eternal kirtan, and we are just listening to Srila Bhakti no Thakur singing that kirtan. Why? Because we want to be touched by his bhav, by his transcendental feelings. His divine realization. Hmm? So if we'll have the ego, I am singing this song, then it will not be the same. Because if we will sing, then it may be mixed with some worldly ego of this world. So giving up our own ego when we sing, I am not the singing, Srila Bhakti no Thakur is singing, and we want to listen to him, and we pray, O oh, Srila Bhakti no Thakur, may one drop of the endless ocean of your love touch my heart, and change my life forever. Hmm? So it may be that you sing a song of Srila Bhakti no Thakur, but you're not realizing it. So Gurudev said, don't worry. You should be exactly like one man who got a job in a candle factory. Once a man, he got a job in a candle factory and, after, and he was dealing with the candles, passing them, moving around all day. And at the end of the day, he got home from work and he noticed I've got wax on my hands. So he tried to wash his hands and wash off the wax. And he washed it off. But what he didn't know is that he didn't get it all off. A little bit stuck there. And after many, many weeks and months working in the candle factory, at the end of the day when he washed his hands, but there was a layer of wax in his skin that would not come out. So in the same way. Why? Because every day, a little bit of that mood was coming to him. So in the same way, if we sing the songs of Srila Bhaktinam Thakur, without any pride or ego, thinking I am listening to his divine kirtan, a little drop of the mood of Srila Bhakti no Thakur will stick to us each day. And then after many years, we can become absorbed in what Srila Bhakti, Vino, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarva Thakur called the Vinod Dhara. We are in the Vino, Vinod Dhara, the current of the love of Srila Bhakti no Thakur. Just as Sri, just as Sri Chaitanya who came to the world and he bought a a flood of love 
It is like Bhagavad Maharaj who brought the flood of the Ganges from heaven into this world. But then it was he lost it. But then he prayed to Janu Rishi and again it began to flow. So similarly, Srila Bhakti Nam Thakur, he is like the Bhagavad Rishi, who even though the flow of the praying brought to this world by Srila uh, Chaitanya Map was stopped for some time, but Srila Bhakti Nam Thakur made that flow flow again. So we want to be in that flow, that Vinod Dara, the flow of the love of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, reinitiated by Srila Bhakti Nam Thakur. And the best way to do this is to always go out and meet with people and invite them. Please come to the marketplace of the Holy Name. The Namahatra of Nityananda Prabhu.